Hi, I'm Bob, and welcome to Between the Sheets, where we look at Microsoft Excel and related technologies. In an earlier episode, we briefly looked at Excel's new take function, and in this episode, I want to kick it up a notch and show you how you might combine it with the filter function. When you have columns and rows of data, the take function will extract the number of columns or rows that you specify, like the first three rows or the last four columns. The filter function does exactly what it sounds like. It will filter data on the fly. So let's take a look and see how it works. You see here we have about 200 rows of orders that people placed, and it's currently arranged by date from January to December. So let's start simple. I want to go and get the first five rows. So that's going to be these first five rows of data. Let's take a look at the syntax first. The take function has three arguments, and the third argument is optional. So we say equals take, and the first argument is the array, so that's the entire data set that you just saw. Second argument is what rows do we want, and the optional third argument is what columns do we want. And if you want, you could get columns and not rows, and I'll show you how to do that. Let me give you a few examples first. So if I say equals take and then put in a, an address of ranges and say, okay, A10 to J30, and I want five, then it's going to go and grab the first five rows. I generally prefer using range names for something like this. So I might apply a range name of data to that entire block data. So if I say equals take and then look at the array called data and minus five, then I'm going to get the last five rows, right? So a positive number means go from the beginning, and a negative number means go and grab from the end. If I say equals take and look at data and two commas and three, so what that means is that second comma is looking at rows. So if there's nothing before that comma, it means I don't care about the rows, and three means go and get three comms. So that's how you could get columns and not worry about rows. And if I say equals take and look at that area, and ignore or have empty for rows, and at minus three, it means go and get the last three columns. So now we could go and use this on the worksheet. So what I'm going to do is apply that range name of data to this entire area. So I just make sure I'm clicked somewhere in there. I'm going to press Control A or Command A on the Mac, so I select this whole region, and I'm going to go up into that name box, and I'm going to call it Data, press Enter, so now I could go and choose data, and I see the whole thing is selected. I want to create two more range names, one for, one for state and one for variety. So I'm just going to select these two column headers, the state and variety column headers, control shift down arrow to select those entire columns. And then I go into the formulas tab, create from selection, create from the top row, but not from the left column and OK. So now if I go to use in formula, I see I have those three names, and I also have them up here. So there's data, that's state, and that's variety. OK, so let's go now to the bottom. I'll just press Control down arrow. To make it easy to get down to the bottom. I'll just click uh, down here. So I'm going to say equals take and I want data. Notice as soon as I type the letter D, the little syntax helper says, oh yeah, you've got this range called data. So you can use that. And I'm going to grab that, comma, and I said I want the first five rows, so I just put in five. I'm going to ignore columns for now. Close the parenthesis, press enter. And I got it, but you see there's a little bit of a problem because it's considering that first row, those column headers, as part of this first five rows. So that's really not very useful. By the way, you notice this is one of the new spill functions. If I click in the cell where I actually entered the formula, the formula looks normal. If I click any of the other cells, you see it's grayed out and we have this nice border around it. So that's how you know it's a spill function. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna delete this here. And to make this work a little better, what I'm gonna do, let me go up to the top here, I want to turn this into a table. So I'm going to go to the Home tab, 
format as table, and I'm going to choose this particular uh, layout, OK it, and now we have it as a table. Now, because I created a table, it puts me into the table design tab on the ribbon bar, and in the beginning of the ribbon bar, it gives us a generic name of table one. I'm going to remove that. I'm going to call this orders. I can actually now refer to this table as data or orders because one is a range name, the other is the table object name. I think it's going to be better to use the table object name so that I don't have to worry about getting those column headers. So now let's go and run this formula again. I'll go down to the bottom here somewhere and I'm going to say equals take and the array. Now I'm going to call it orders and notice as soon as I start typing that in, OR, it shows me that name. So I can tab that in, comma, five. Whether I have a space after that comma or not does not make any difference. And now I have the data and not the column headers. Okay, now let's go and get the last five rows instead of the first five. So I'm just going to double click that cell and I'm going to take that five and turn it to a minus. And now I have the last five. And you can see from Byron down to Ivory, there it is. It's extracting those rows. Okay, so far so good. But you notice when you look at column D and column E, these have all the states and all the varieties mixed in. What if you want just one particular state or one particular variety? Well, let's go up to the top here. You might think, oh, okay, that's fine. I have a table. So all I have to do is filter the table. Well, watch what happens when we do that. I'm going to go to the state drop down. I'm going to remove select all. I'm going to go and find my home state of New Jersey. So I have it all filtered by New Jersey. I have all the different varieties, but this is just New Jersey. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go in there. You notice nothing's changed. And if I set this back to positive five instead of negative five, shows me the first five rows like I did before, but notice that the filtering that I did of the table is not reflected in the take function. So let's go and just delete that formula, and I'm going to go up to the top, and I'm going to clear that filter because this clearly doesn't help us any. So this is where the filter function comes into play. Before we use it, let's look at the syntax. So the way this works, the syntax is we say equals filter, open the parenthesis. The first argument is the data range, just like we saw before. It's that entire table. The second argument, this is a little different from most Excel functions. Rather than just a comma, we say criteria range equals, and then we literally put something. We're literally going to type in that value that we want. And the third argument is optional what you can put in if there is no result. So if it doesn't find, so if we put in New Jersey and it doesn't find it, we can put in our own custom error message like not found or something like that. Let's use the filter function just by itself before we nest it inside the take function. Let's go back down to the bottom here. And I just want to filter out New Jersey. So I'm going to say equals filter. And I'm going to look at orders, right? There's the name of that table object. And remember, we created that range name called state. So I'm going to go to the formulas tab, use in formula, and there is state. So I'm going to say state equals, and I can't just type in NJ. I have to put it in double quotes. When you put text into an Excel formula, you have to put it any text in quotes. Otherwise, Excel isn't going to know what you're doing, what it is, and it'll give you an error. So just that, enter it, great. And now we can see all of the orders that are in New Jersey. Let me just show you another example here. What if we want to see all of the orders of a particular variety? So I'll just double click that to edit it. And instead of state equals NJ, I'm going to go to use in formula and I'm going to choose variety. And I'm going to say variety equals Java in quotes. And here are all the orders of Java. So now what we could do is we could nest the filter function inside the take function. And I'll start by grabbing the first five rows. So let me go up here. I'm just going to delete the formula. We'll start all over again. So we're going to say equals take, open the parenthesis, the first argument in the 
take function, I'm going to use the filter function. So I'm going to say filter, and let's open up its parenthesis. It did that for me automatically. I didn't have to type in a second one. I'm going to use the orders table. Put that in. And the second argument, let's go to use in formula, and I'm going to say state equals open quotes and j. This is not case sensitive. Just have to spell it right. Comma, first five rows, close the outer parenthesis for the take function. So I have this parenthesis opening the take function, that one's closing it. This is opening the filter function, that's closing it. Enter. And there we go. So the first five rows just for New Jersey. And let's scroll a little bit. Let's get the last five rows. I'll take that five and I'll set it to minus five. And now these are the last five rows of New Jersey. If I go and filter this, you'll see that it worked. Like you can see the last record there, Ivory. There's Ivory again because she is from New Jersey. Oh, and by the way, if you do this on the Mac or if you use the filter function in the Mac version of Excel and it throws a pound value error, you're probably not doing anything wrong. Um, I found that on the Mac, you have to use the actual cell reference instead of the range names for that filter function. And hopefully they will have that bug fix. Let's do a couple of examples with columns. So I'm going to go and remove that. So I'm going to say equals take, open up the parenthesis. The first argument is going to be the filter function. And for that, I'm going to use, like before, the orders table, comma, and now I'm going to go up to use in formula and I'm going to grab variety and I'm going to say variety equals Sumatra. And we close that parenthesis. Now I don't care about rows. So what I'm going to do is after that comma, I'm just going to put another comma. So that's telling it, hey, just forget about rows. Now we want columns. So I want the first four columns. Close the parenthesis, enter it. And now you see I've got those first four columns. Right? First name, last name. Now the date, you notice this is coming out as serial number. Uh, we can fix that in a moment. And this is giving us the state. So if you don't like this coming out, and I don't blame you, I'm just going to select that whole thing. And what I could do is in the Home tab, I could go and change it to a date. Other ways of formatting that, of course, but so now we can see that's right. Now, if I want the last four columns, I'm just going to double click that. And instead of a positive four, I'm going to change that to a minus four. There we go. So we can see Sumatra is $9 a pound for every record. Now you notice this is giving us some crazy dates. That's because this really should not be a date column. So I'm going to select this and I'm just going to set this back to a general number because this is the number of pounds that are ordered. So by formatting that as a date, we get some kind of wacky formatting, but now we've reset the formatting and it's giving us stuff that's correct. There are other functions you might want to use with the take function, like sort, sort by, or unique. So until next time, my name is Bob, and this has been Between the Sheets.